Hi, I'm Kate and I'm the UK Marketing Manager and I'm here to talk about creating influence. So in the last module, we spoke about the range of online channels consumers can use to read or watch content. But what we didn't dwell on is the role of influencers in engaging an audience. But let's explore that now. Today's influencers aren't just celebrities, politicians, journalists or business leaders. Influencers are as likely to be ordinary people who have built a following by publishing great content in a particular area of interest, be it a personal hobby, a professional area of expertise. Let's consider these influencers as cases in point. So Jaclyn Hill is a professional makeup artist. On her YouTube channel, Jaclyn reviews new products, gives makeup advice, and it feels a lot like a chat amongst friends. And her audience? Well, let's just say that over 3 million people tune into her show. And another example? The Engineering Commons is a group of savvy engineers who gather every two weeks to record a podcast about trending issues in their industry. From hour-long discussions about steel to quirky reviews of places engineers like to go on holiday. Jessica Boak and Ray Bailey are self-confessed geeks who blog about beer and pubs. The duo live in Cornwall, England and have been writing about their passion since 2007. Want to know what makes a classic pub or which are the best brown bitters? Then these are the people to ask. So you may be asking, what do any of these individuals have to do with the businesses that I run? Well, the answer is simple. There is a set of niche influencers for any subject matter you can come up with and in any region you operate in, whether you're in consulting, agriculture, food, services or fashion. For each hobby or professional interest, there are plenty of passionate people out there who are creating content about it. These people already have an audience and it's their audience you're trying to reach. For businesses trying to get started with a storytelling approach, connecting with and even collaborating with influencers is a way to build an audience more quickly and efficiently. For small and medium-sized businesses, influencer programs can also be more cost-effective than building an audience from scratch. Don't forget though, journalists are influencers too, and working with influencers doesn't mean abandoning your existing contacts, but rather enhancing that group with a different type of content creator who speaks to the audience you want to reach. We've already seen how influencers can give you access to niche audiences and, in particular, give you access to social media channels where you might have been struggling a little bit to build an audience. But that's not the whole story. Consumers are wary of marketing messages from companies. So, for example, if a financial software company were to tell you that using their software will improve your work, you're probably going to question it because the messenger has an agenda. They want you to buy their software. But if a trusted influencer says the same thing, and that person is someone you've listened to before, you're probably going to be more likely to take their advice. After all, they don't really care if you purchased the product or not. So this is the secondary benefit of an influencer program. Consumers are more likely to listen to the messages that come from their peers, whether someone known to them or an influencer they follow, than from a brand. Influencers can humanize your message and offer credibility that a brand either doesn't have or hasn't yet earned. Research bears this out. The Edelman Trust Barometer measures the level of trust consumers have in news media, as well as a host of other informal relationships and emerging new media formats. Edelman's research shows that family and friends are most trusted, which is hardly surprising. Not far behind that are companies that I use. 65% are willing to trust companies they currently use. Journalists are trusted by 44% and online personalities by 42%. Information from companies consumers don't use is trusted by just 31%. An influencer program simply means boosting your trust quotient by working with stakeholders that consumers trust. Let's rewind to our example from just a few moments ago about the software company recommending a software purchase. We imagined an audience wouldn't buy from such a self-serving message. So brace yourselves. We, a software company, are about to recommend a software. But don't worry. If you don't currently use my news desk, then what we're about to say applies to other solutions as well. Putting together an influencer program takes hard work and oversight. Relationships aren't built on a single interaction, but on many interactions over time. And multiply that by the number of influencers you would like to engage, and even collaborate in some way, and you have a huge scope of work. Software does help in this regard. We'll briefly discuss how solutions like My News Desk, amongst others, can help you manage influencers. In this section, we'll take a look at the steps you need to take to set up your very own influencer program. Firstly, identify key industry journalists, social influencers, and brand advocates. Now, your first task here is to assemble a list of all the influencers who speak to the audience you want to reach. But where should you be searching for relevant influencers? Well, the most basic 
method to use is Google. Simply plug in the keyword phrases and see which niche publishers pop up. For example, if your company sells blenders and you've determined that health conscious millennials are an important market to build brand awareness, a search of vegan smoothies will lead you to Dana from the Minimalist Baker blog. Or a search for the blogs that architects are reading will likely lead you to the life of an architect. Although searching manually is a great first step, technology can really help the process. Which solutions speed up the process? There is a massive ecosystem of tools that include features for influencer marketing, whether enterprise tools that manage the entire content creation and management, or highly specialized tools that aid in just one particular aspect of the process. For our discussion about influencer outreach, let's consider two categories in particular. Firstly, newsroom tools. These are multi-feature enterprise tools that help allow your in-house communications or PR teams to function much like a media newsroom. Um, my news desk is a good example of this. A similar category or tool that applies more to marketing professionals is called marketing automation solutions. And secondly, specialized channel tools. While a multi-feature newsroom tool will take care of most of your influencer needs, specialized tools can help you identify additional influencers in niche categories. For example, if your top influencers are most active on Instagram, Iconosquare helps you find the most relevant influencers. Viralwoo does the same for interests, and Ghostcos is a great niche tool for Snapchat. Commit to listening. Ultimately, no single tool will take place of listening. While technology can automate some of the work, you should also be a regular user of social media channels your customer frequently use so you can hear what they are hearing. Consider signing up for a social media monitoring tool, for example, Hootsuite or Sprout Social. These will make it easier to check and regularly synthesize the top news and trends in a particular topic area, as well as see who is the most active in those areas. With a list of potential influencer targets in mind, you need to ask yourself these questions to ensure you found the right people for you. Do they share my audience? Are there readers and viewers people that you want to reach? Is their content relevant? Do they publish content in a subject area that overlaps with your company's area of expertise or personifies the values you want your company to stand for? Do they have an established audience? We generally recommend that influencers should have at least 3,000 followers. Fewer followers, for example, 1,000 or less, is totally fine, but if they're particularly specialised and relevant to you. Are they creating content regularly? In our experience, a blogger might be rated as a top five choice one year and then drop out the following year. Even with those big followings, may no longer be creating regular content. Is their overall message in line with your PR content strategy? Some influencers may publish topics that interest your audience, but they may also have habits that you don't want to be associated with. For example, do they have views that might alienate your audience or use inappropriate language? You need to explore each of your choices really carefully before continuing. Are they advocates for your company or, or offering? If the answer is no, then this isn't a deal breaker, but a yes in, the, in this category is a big win. With a priority list in hand, commit to growing a relationship with top influencers. But remember, except in rare cases, these relationships won't just develop overnight. You need to help the relationship grow over time by doing things like, one, sharing influencers' content. For example, if an influencer shares something on Facebook, go ahead and share it with your audience or comment on it in a constructive or interesting way. Two, sharing valuable information. Don't send every influencer everything you come across. Share judiciously by segmenting your influencer list and deciding what particular topics suit each of them best. This must sound familiar by now, as spamming journalists is equally frowned upon. Three, reaching out with memorable messages from time to time. If you find out an influencer will be at a conference that you're also going to, ping them ahead of time. For example, you might know them from their social profile, that they're avid cyclists. Ask them whether they'll be exploring any of the bike trails after the conference is over. Make it personal, short and sweet. Assuming the influencer you've chosen to co-create with has the right audience and shares your value, it's critical to map out an agreement that details incentives, targets for reach and impressions, and any necessary risk mitigation. So firstly, incentives. Decide whether the relationship will be purely financial or whether you'll agree a barter type arrangement. Secondly, look at metrics. What targets will you both agree to? 
does the collaboration require a certain number of impressions, for example? And thirdly, transparency. Is the relationship transparent to the audience? Does the influencer reveal that they've been reimbursed? We think they should. A tool like my news desk, or other influencer management tools, offers you a great way to manage the complexity of multiple influencer contacts. Specifically, one, manage contacts. Technology can help you not only create lists, but segment them by key topics. Also, keep track of the influencer's audience scale and engagement to ensure you're working with the right people. Two, manage alerts. A good tech platform will allow readers to set up alerts, giving you permission to send them information on a particular topic. This is a preferable system to a single stream subscriber model, where a reader can only turn alerts on or off. Three, discover new influencers. Assembling your influencer list is a process that should not end. Technology will help you keep tabs on who's covering specific topics and who's writing about your brand or your competitor's brand. Four, optimization. Finally, use my news desk to analyze your communications, track the reach of your activities and the exposure you've received. One, influencers are both ordinary and famous people who have built an audience among the very people you want to reach. So just think of them as a shortcut to visibility, to put it bluntly. Two, every business, no matter how small or specialized, has a set of influencers that can potentially help it grow. Three, influencers offer a built-in audience, plus they can lend you their trustworthiness. Consumers usually trust influencers, be they experts, hobbyists, or even social media celebrities, more than they trust brands. Four, managing a collection of influencers is complicated. Technology can help with governments and outreach. And five, the brand influencer relationship must be mutually beneficial.